Welcome to Cards and Capital Weekly Update number three. This week, I learned something about myself at the poker table, and I'm about to give you some top-level introspection and self-reflection. That's right, I'm going to fill you in on what I learned. Also, you gave me a great suggestion, and I'm excited to tell you about it and bring you in on that as well. I'm going to update you on my bankroll, the investment account, and then I'm going to tell you why I added to Microchip Technologies as a position this week. But before we get to any of that, we got to talk about something that happened last week that went almost unrecognized, almost completely under the radar, and that was PacWest Bank. Let's talk about it real quick. So back in March, we heard about Silicon Valley and Signature Bank. These banks were collapsing. Somebody had to step in and save those banks. So they came in and bought their assets up at a discount, and these other big banks said, hey, we'll take care of things. Crisis averted. Well, later in May, First Republic Bank goes down. And again, same process. So now at that point, I really, when the first bank started going down, I started watching a lot of the bank stocks, a lot of the banking information, and just trying to see, are we close to more of these failing or is everything fine? And one of the banks that I was watching is PacWest Bank. Now that bank was floundering and it looked like it may collapse as well until this week when it had great news that don't worry, it's not going to collapse. It's just being sold to Bank of California. But I want to show you an article that came out that was talking about what happened with this bank. So JP Morgan rides to the rescue again, snapping up mortgages worth $1.8 billion as part of the PacWest merger. So the question we need to ask ourselves is, why is JP Morgan stepping in while Bank of California is buying this other bank? JP Morgan plans to buy mortgages worth $1.8 billion as part of PacWest Bank Corp's merger with Bank of California. The Wall Street Bank is set to buy the single-family residential loans at a discount. Let's think about this for a second by saying that we have a totally different business. For whatever reason, you run a taco truck and you've invented a machine where you press a button, it spits a taco out. You're making money hand over fist. You've got the only taco machine in town and the money is just rolling in. And now somebody approaches you and says, hey, we'd like to buy your business. Well, if your business is flourishing and things are going well, are you going to sell your equipment at a discount? You're going to sell your truck at a discount? You're going to sell everything that you have at less than what it's valued? No, you're going to ask for probably what it's at or more because this business is not only worth what the actual equipment is worth, it's worth the potential earnings in the future. So if your business is strong and in a good position, you're never selling at a discount, right? The only reason you're selling your taco machine, man, a taco machine, somebody invent that. <laughs> the only reason you're going to sell your equipment or your business at a discount is because it's not working for you anymore. Or maybe there's some kind of an emergency, a family medical emergency or something, and you got to pay all these medical bills. So maybe you need the cash. Whatever the reason is, you're never selling it because the business is so strong. You're selling it because of an underlying factor that has changed. So let's say, for example, that Baba Ganoush Euros opens next door. They advanced your technology. They can press a button and a Euro spits out. So now there's something that's changed, right? Now you're interested in selling it at cost or maybe under cost. So when we see that this bank is selling its assets below their market value at a discount to JP Morgan, who's not even the actual party involved in the transaction, they're coming in third party to just scoop up these things and pick them up. My guess is these are assets that are failing. They're not worth their uh, face value. And so they're being bought up at a huge discount. We don't know what the discount is. It doesn't say, you know, 50 cents in the dollar, 60, 70, whatever it is but it says they're being sold at a discount. So we know that there's a problem with PacWest Bank's assets, right? Their balance sheet is not healthy or they would just stay in business and keep making money. But this article really helps us to draw out what's happening. And that is that the banking sector is not as healthy as everyone is saying it is. You wouldn't have banks liquidating their assets at a loss if things were healthy. We've talked last week about the reason I have this case that long-term these markets, it's going to be hard to sustain a booming bull market if you have banks collapsing, if you have your job losses coming, all the things we discussed last week and more, just adding to that case. It doesn't mean that that is the outcome. It just means that this is more information that may push us towards favoring that outcome overall. With that covered, let's go to poker and talk about what I learned this week. I'm about to introspect on you hard. I played two poker sessions this week. First, I played on Friday, both short, but the first one I went out and I'm playing with uh, a table that's playing fairly snug with one player who's very active. And it goes to me in the small blind, I have pocket aces. The flop comes down king, queen, deuce, rainbow, and it goes, I continuation bet, 
there's a call from the tight player and a jam from the loose player. So now it's pretty easy for me to just make the call on the jam. And it goes to the tight player who opened and he now calls. The river is a king and I'm like, oh shoot, that did it. There's gonna be an ace king out here that now has trips and I'm dead. Well, it wasn't trips, it was quad kings. We ended up losing money on the session, but after that large amount of swing in that one hand, you know, we're grateful to only have a $200 loss. On Saturday, it was time to totally redeem yourself. And so I showed back up to the poker room, uh, planning to try to get back that 200 and then some, and things went even worse. So I lost uh, with queens three times, kings once, aces once. I got set over set. I ended up making a two pair. The preflop aggressor bets when I check to him. I decide to check raise the turn. After I check raise the turn, he ends up jamming all in over the top of me on a board that has uh, ace king on the board with two hearts. And I have two pair. I feel like it's pretty hard to get away from two pair. And at the same time, I think there's no way I'm good here because of the raise sizing, because of how big it is. And the fact that he has all the nuts advantage, I'm showing him I have a really strong hand and he's continuing anyway. So I'm in a bad spot, but I've, I've gone from a $900 loss. I've, I've been fighting all day to get the money back and I'm stuck $50 at this point. So I'm really close to even. This thought goes through my head that if I win this hand, I will not just be even, but I will have a profit. I can invest that and I have something to bring back to you guys. So that is part of this thought process that's never really been there before. But I think I was on tilt enough that like a little bit of a, man, I'm due. I've just been losing all day. I've just been getting sucked out on every time I play, no matter what, if I have the best hand or not, I feel like I'm due. And I end up after two minutes kind of reluctantly calling, thinking uh, he can be doing this with a suited ace of hearts where he's got top pair and the redraw. Maybe I'm good. I think I just need a fold. For the price I'm being given, I just need a fold. I end up losing that hand. I end up losing on the session. And uh, ultimately, I end up down about $800 this week. So what did I learn out of this? I learned that now that I've got this challenge going, I've got a little bit of this extra drive that I've got to control that says I need some results for this next update. And I have to chill out a little bit and just rein myself in and just think, play good poker, play good poker. You may remember the last update that I shared with you that I was making uh, $209 an hour after playing this one first session and I was uh, jokingly bragging about that I've now, I've arrived, I've made it. Well, now after taking these beats and going back the other way, we're just over $21 an hour since we started the challenge. Obviously still making close to $70 an hour over the course of the year, so we're not in a horrible spot. But for the challenge, we've now dropped our hourly. We only have $257 worth of profit at this point, which means I got to grind this thing back up to a new all-time high before I can invest any more money. Let's go ahead and move on now from where we're at with the bankroll to where we're at with the investment account. Last update that I gave you on the account, we had $8,715.44. As of today, we have $8,792.77. And before you say, wow, that's really good. What a great week. Let me tell you that I put money into this account. I put $100 a month as my normal investment. So uh, I've only lost money <laughs> since I did that. I'm kind of positioned against the market and for volatility right now. And volatility dropped to another big low. Everything went sky high. And so uh, my, my investment account, my stock side did pretty well. My positions against the market did not, and I ended up losing some money. Well, the next day, we get this giant volatility spike as U.S. debt gets downgraded, and we get a big old bump up, and so I made a couple hundred dollars that day, recovered more than what we had made, and now on today, we're sitting fairly flat, really. Uh, we're down about two-tenths of a percent, um, sitting at 87.92.77, but again, I did put in $100, so we, we are slightly down so far on where we're at. Now, one of the interesting things is that volatility index is kind of climbing. We'll see what it does, but it's been continuously climbing this week, and I think that's a really positive thing for the way I am positioned, not necessarily for the whole market. All right, now let's talk really quick about microchip technologies and what's going on there and why I ended up purchasing four additional shares of this as a short-term trade this week. If we look here at microchip technologies chart, you can see that about this 88 89, 90 level is what we're experiencing at the end of 2021. And I read a book a while back called How to Make Money in Stocks um, by William J. O'Neill. And it talks about this pattern right here where you get, it's called like a cup and handle, I believe. 
So you're going to see this like it draws down, it comes back up, it kind of tests that previous level, drops back down, and then it starts going. And he talks about if you get this move right here where you're breaking through and you're holding above the previous all-time high, typically, especially if you have good news, good earnings, good fundamentals, which this company does, you're going to see it continue to move up. Now, it's not a guarantee, but it's just a likelihood. So what we saw, let me go to the one-month chart here, is that this level right here, this like previous all-time high, you can see it just kind of bumping through, getting above and holding, and it was right in this range that I decided to go ahead and make a purchase. So it hit 93.50, and I said, I'm in. Now I have a stop loss in around the 86.50 mark, and so if this thing really continues to go low, and you can see in the one-month chart, we've got about... Uh, a low of, yeah, right in that range, so about 86.50. If we hit that low again, I would be stopped out of these positions. So I'm not guaranteeing that this is going to be a, a trade that works out for me. I covered this last time, so I'm going to give you a really quick overview of the fundamentals. Let's look at MCHP. Again, you can see that cup and handle forming. It's going up, hits an all-time high, takes this drop, makes the cup and handle, and now is going to this like new all-time high, kind of testing, uh, revenues increasing greatly here, which is awesome. So we're at 2.23 billion market cap of 50.8. We've got a price to earnings of 23, not too shabby. Profit margins are looking good. Free cash flow. This is a great chart. And you can see if I add the stock based compensation that it's pretty minimal here. So we've got some really positive free cash flow and uh, pretty minimal payouts of stock. So we're not getting super diluted there. Our cash to debt, debt is on the decline here, which we like to see. And the dividend trend is definitely going the right direction. So if we go back to 2002, it was a penny. Right now we're seeing 38 cents per quarter per share. Pretty good. And it is definitely trending the right way. So I like to see that. And then the shares outstanding are somewhat increasing. So not an ideal scenario. You definitely want to see these coming down. But uh, some things that I like in this, this return on cash employed is increasing pretty much every quarter, which is nice to see. As far as their expenses go, they're spending a lot of money on research and development, and they have new products hitting the market. They're really focused into not so much the AI space, but more into like the basic everyday stuff like the auto industry and some medical devices, some of the like industrial uh, tech devices. So um, being able to like controllers for motors, things like that. And so there's just a lot of application here that we really like to see. So a lot of positive, a couple of things, maybe I would say the shares outstanding on a slight increase, not perfect, but for the most part, a company that I like, a trend that I like, and just a lot of potential for positive movement in the future. And now let's get to the final thing, which is an idea that you came up with. So I was asked if I would compare this portfolio against the S&P. I'm sure I'm going to get my clock cleaned here, and I'm fine with that. My overall assessment of the market is that I think it is unlikely we just continue to go up and up and up and up and up. Again, I'm learning how to invest. I don't claim to be great at this thing. Thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out for week number three. I'll talk to you again next week with another update.